Nehemiah, a board game that is set in the time period of Israel's history where Israel has uh, been released from Babylon to go back and build the city walls of Jerusalem. And that's what this game is about, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. It's a worker placement game, something I really enjoy. But let's see. To begin the game, each player takes their seven meeples in a three-player game. In a two- to four-player game, it's six, me six meeples. And you put them behind the board along with uh, four gold and two wood. And once everybody has done that, you may begin the game. In order to win a game of Nehemiah, you have to get the most points at the end of the game. There will be three rounds that the game will be played in. At the end of that third round, uh, once it ends, final scoring happens, and we count the number of points everybody has accumulated over the course of the game, and whoever has the most points wins. So how do you go about getting these points? Well, you get points by influencing the three different places. Whoever has the most cubes will get the most points um, in those areas. Same thing with building the wall. Another way you can get points is by building these gate cards. Gate cards have a certain number of points on them. Uh, again, the fours are at the bottom, threes are in the middle, and twos are on top. Some of these cards in other rounds will give you just straight up victory points as well. And so whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. That's the whole point of the game. During your turn, you're going to be able to do one of two things. You are either going to be able to take one of your meeples and place them on a worker space. A worker space is one of the cards in one of the rows. And in order to do that, you would have to pick one of the columns and then place your meeple on the first available spot in that column. So if you're the first person, you have the choice of all four columns, but you can only place in the top row. You could would not be able to place in any of the other rows. I want to get some wood, so I place one of my guys there. The yellow player then has the opportunity to choose any of these columns. If they choose this column, this column, or this column, they can only place in the top row. But if they choose this column, they can only place in the second row. We're gonna go ahead and, money is not a bad thing, we're gonna go ahead and place that there. Blue would then have the same opportunity and they will go ahead and place right here. He wants to start training some guards. All right, and then now it comes back to Green's second turn, basically. Now in the first turn, uh, everybody pretty much had only one option. Now I have the option of either activating him by laying him down and then that would get me one wood from the reserve or I could take another meeple and place it somewhere on the board. But again, remember, you can only do one thing on your turn. You cannot place one and then activate another. You have to either place one or activate one. All right, so uh, Meeple here will go ahead and place there. Yellow will go here. Blue will come over and say, you know what? I'm really wanting to get most influence on that in that guard shack, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now Green is actually going to choose this time to use one of his worker spots. So he's going to activate this worker. This means that I, that Green, after activating this spot, can now place one or two workers on any spot on the board as long as normal placement rules apply. So he would have to choose a single column for the first one and place it on the first open spot from the top. And then he could do the same thing with the second one. So he's going to choose to take two workers and he's going to place one of them here. Then he's going to place another one of them here. Okay, so now it comes to yellow player's turn. And this is one of the nuances of the game that you kind of have to get used to as you play. You cannot, uh, unless you were the top person, well, I'm sorry, you can activate, but the benefit of activating 
uh, later after other people have activated in front of you or on top of you is actually worth it. Because whenever you activate a person, you can do this action because you activated that card. But if someone above you in the same column has activated already before you did, you can also activate them by paying that person one gold. So if this were the case, yellow would be able to activate and get two gold. Then they would be able to pay, then they would be able to pay green one gold and take a wood as well. So there are benefits to waiting for people who are above you to activate their spot first so that you have the opportunity to do more than one thing when you activate your worker. So that is one thing to keep in mind. So on yellow's turn, they're not going to activate. They're going to play the wait game here and see if they can do something special. All right, so now we go to blue. Now blue has the opportunity to activate, so they're going to go ahead and activate here. They're going to train a guard by using a wood and a gold and turning it into the bank. Then that allows them to take one of their influence cubes and place it on the guard tile up at the top. That simply means that they are now, they now have influence in the guard shack and in a three player game, if they have the most, at the end of this round, they're gonna get five points. Now that he activated this and green has already activated that, he can also pay green one gold and activate that as well. So he will take two of his special guys and uh, we're going to activate here. I'm, I'm sorry, place there, normal placement rules. And then we will also place here as well. This one allows me to pay two gold to build one of the gate cards. And that's green's turn. So now it comes back, I'm sorry, that's blue's turn. Now it comes back to green. Green will activate this card. This card allows green to pay one gold to influence the temple. Now I do that because I want you to understand you don't have to go from top to bottom when you're activating your meeples. You can start down here as far down. Now it may have been better for me to activate here first so that when I activated this, I could also do that because you can activate one of your own again by paying one gold to the bank. But I chose not to. Yellow is going to activate this and get a wood. Blue is going to activate this guy. Now, if he wants to, he does not have to, but if he wants to, he can pay two wood to build one of those tiles. But sometimes you may not want to do that just to keep other people from doing certain things in the, in the row because whenever the bottom most card in each column is activated, it takes away all of these whether they have been activated or not, and replaces the row. And then new cards are drawn for each row. And now the game continues. Whenever that happens, and there are no more cards of the current round available to fill that row, the round ends, okay, so let's say that these were not there and bl blue player did that and there were no more white cards left, then the round would end. We would look here and see who has the most. Points would be divvied out. If there were any ties, if there were any ties, the two players that are tied would take the first two spots. So if, if let's say if something like this happened, where blue and green are tied for first place, they would take the two spots, the four and the two, add them together and then divide by the number of people that are tied. 
and then that's how many points each person would get. Then, after all the points are divvied out, new cards are placed, and the next round begins. And that round continues until the two cards are done, at which point the second round ends, scoring takes place, and then the third round begins, and, and so forth and so on. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Now, the actual placement of these cards, or rather what those cards do, is where the real flavor of the game comes into play and where a lot of back and forth interaction happens between the players. For example, here, um, this allows you to take one or two of your workers and stand them back up again so that you can reactivate places that you are already placed. Uh, we already went through this guy right here where um, you get to place two workers, one or two workers. Here, you get to influence the wall if you pay one lumber, and so forth and so on. And as you go through the game, some of the size two, um, I'm sorry, round two uh, cards are such like, instead of just getting uh, one, one wood for some of these, you're now getting two. Uh, now you can influence, you can train two guards instead of one. Um, here, you're getting one victory point. Uh, this one, you can take one of your uh, workers and replace one of your opponent's workers. So there's a lot of different interaction uh, between these and in these cards. A lot of different things you can do. Here, you can now influence two, place two influence cubes in the temple. Um, so again, this allows you to uh, switch two cards that are in the rows and the meeples that are on them go with them. So there's a lot of different things. This can trigger the end of a, uh, of a row in case, for example, let's say that uh, this guy was down here and these two guys get switched or, or rather these two guys get switched. That makes this column go away because this card, the last, the bottom one in the column has been activated. So again, there's a lot of different ways that you can interact with the different car, with each other through the different powers that are in the game. And that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about it. It did not feel like it was a solid, everybody was playing their own little solitaire game really felt that we were each trying to be the best construction worker or the best construction contractor um, as we were helping build the wall at Jerusalem. And let me tell you, this was a, an absolutely pleasant surprise. Now, being a Christian, I am predisposed, I guess you could say, to, to liking a game that has this kind of theme on it. But as I have said in the past, I am usually underwhelmed by many of the Christian games or Christian themed games that come out because they usually try uh, in getting the theme across. They usually try to they, they usually end up rather sacrificing some kind of mechanism or some kind of uh, integrity of the game to make that theme shine a little bit more. There are a lot of games that are coming out right now that are not like that anymore. This one has joined that pack. This, this is one of the games that is starting to break the mold uh, that Christian games are boring and not modern. I love the mechanic of having to place in the same row and then having to place on the first one available in that row. And then when you activated that guy, you could activate any of the other uh, spots in your column uh, that have already been exhausted. And uh, I really enjoyed that. It's, it's uh, innovative, to me at least. I don't know of any other worker placement games that are out there right now that do that thing. I liked a lot of the different uh, powers that the... Uh, different workers would be able to activate. I enjoyed the interaction between players because there was a lot of, unfortunately, there was a lot of backstabbing going on and there was a lot of taking advantage of each other um, during the rebuilding of the wall. And that's one of the things that Nehemiah was sent uh, to do was to get these people uh, kind of back on track and all focused on the same task at hand and rebuilding the walls. So there's a lot of good theme in this and it really sticks to that biblical theme very well while at the same time it doesn't sacrifice any of those modern mechanics that uh, 
Christian games have been known to do in the past. I've played this game with people who were not Christians, that I know of, and they were not predisposed to a Christian theme, and they really enjoyed the game. So, whether you're a Christian or not, that, that doesn't matter. Uh, I think you should go and, and try to run down a copy of this, give it a try. As always, like I always say, people, try before you buy. But this one is one that might have slipped under your radar. Go seek it out and give it a try. I think you will not be disappointed. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.